Welcome, I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we want to ask the question, does Jesus Christ command us to be perfect? If we flip to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, it says, Therefore be perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Now, interestingly, this verse is used by those that are in the camp that say that, uh, you know, the, the free grace camp, that say that, you know, the, the Sermon on the Mount was just given to show us that we can't do it, and that's why we need to trust in Jesus. Uh, you know, a lot of dispensationalists also believe this. And so they'll say that right here, see, Jesus commands us to be perfect. Of course, we can't do that. That's why it leads us to the cross so that we'll trust in him. It all is also used by those in the sinless perfection camp. They'll say, look, Jesus said it be very clearly that we need to walk perfectly. We need to walk without sin, that we Christians do not ever sin. And that's just the way it is. We walk perfectly. And since Jesus commanded us to do it, we can do it. But both of these views are wrong. Not only are the views wrong, their interpretation of this passage is wrong. If we go back up to verse 43 and we begin to read, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do, the, do so. Verse 48, therefore. Now, therefore is very important to understand that it's connecting with what he's just been saying. He's been talking about walking in love, not just with your brothers, not with just your friends, but even with your enemies, to do good to those that do evil to you. And so then he's going to say, therefore, be perfect even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. Is he saying walk in all moral perfection? No, he's saying make sure that you have a complete love that is even towards your enemies, not only towards your friends. How can we know for sure that this is the interpretation? We flip over to Luke chapter 6, which is a parallel passage. And if we start reading in verse 32, For if you love those who love you, what thanks do you ha receive? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what thanks do you receive? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what thanks do you receive? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much in return. But love your enemies and do good to the, and lend, hoping for nothing in return. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the highest. For he is kind to the unthankful and the grateful, or and the evil. The next verse, 36. Be therefore... Perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect? No. Be therefore merciful, even as your Father is merciful. So when it says perfect in Matthew, it's, it's talking about being complete in love towards others, having a complete kind of love, not a love that just loves your neighbor, but a love, the one that loves your enemy. And he's, that's what his sermon is about, is about to love all men, even our enemies. And so he's saying, therefore, be perfect, be complete, be merciful, just as your father is merciful. He's kind to the, uh, the ungrateful and to the evil, so you also be kind to the ungrateful and evil. It's not talking about moral perfection. It's not even talking about having a perfect form of mercy. It's just saying that mercy itself is the perfection it's speaking about, the completeness, the fullness, the maturity that it's talking about. So the idea that we are to be perfect even as our heavenly father and uh, even our father in heaven is perfect means that we should be merciful, we should be loving just as he is loving. It doesn't mean that we should be morally perfect as he is morally perfect, which obviously we cannot fully do, but thankfully we have a savior, we have a throne of grace that we can come to him and receive mercy, and we also have the spirit of God that gives us power to overcome wickedness in our lives so that we don't have to walk in rebellion to the king. So it's neither on the side of, oh, a perfect standard, we can't do anything. No, we have the spirit of God and we can live righteously. Nor is it on the side of, oh, you have to be perfect and never sin. If you sin, you're cut off from God. No, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, that we can live without sin. But when we do sin, if we do sin, we have the, uh, the advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. First John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.